All right, Shalom, Israel. This is Judah for Life from Clyde once again. As always, good praise to Heavenly Father for another blessed day to bring forth the word and his truth. Now, let's get down to brass tactics. Let's get down to business. I'm going to pound back on these Jewish people. Now, this is the, another book that came to mail this, today by the Nation of Islam entitled Jews Selling Blacks, Slave Sale Advertising by American Jews. Auction Sales valuable family of filled Negroes. Now, we're going to get into this and then I'm going to make a connection for you for a movie. Right? And, and this, uh, they come, they, that's in this book, we're going to make a connection. Okay? And I was watching uh, one of uh, Minister Farrakhan's lessons and in it, he was talking about the uh, Elmina slave castle and on that slave castle, uh, at the door, at the door, no return. They had a Jewish star on there, but they took it off so they can hide their evidence of them not being involved in the slave trade. The Jewish people, okay. Um, also, he was given. Also, he was talking about back in the 1960s, uh, a, a lady, a slave. She was uh, given an uh, interview. On what was what was like for her being uh, a slave, and she said that she can, she can remember back as far as at the age of five, with her and her family, they had to sleep in a barn and sleep on hay, and they had to cut up together to, to stay warm at night, and she said sometimes it would go days without eating. And the only way they'll be able to survive with food was they had to find what was the closest thing next to eat. And she said whatever they found crawling on the ground, they would have to eat it. Crickets, they would have to eat worms, just to survive. You know what I'm saying? Before we get into this book, I want to go back into here. The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volume 1, Nation of Islam, Part 2, should be in the mail by Thursday. I want to make a lesson on that. Right? I'm going to go here to right here. Jews in the African slave trade. It says, throughout the history of the practice, Jews have been involved in the purchase and sale of human beings. This fact is confirmed by their own scholars and historians. In his book, A History of the Jews, Solomon Grazel states that, quote, Jews were among the most important slave dealers in European society. Lady Magnus writes that in the Middle Ages, quote, the principal purchasers of slaves were found among the Jews. They seemed to be always and everywhere at hand to buy and to have the means equally ready to pay. Henry L. Fingo states, stated that, quote, Jews who were frequently found at the heart of commerce could not have failed to contribute a proportionate share to the slave trade directly or indirectly. In, eight, in uh, 1460, when Jews were the masters of the nautical sciences in Portugal, that nation was importing, importing 700 to 800 slaves yearly. The success of these middle, the success of these medieval merchants was enhanced by their supreme linguistic abilities. They spoke Arabic, Persian, Roman, Frankish. Spanish and Slavonic and quote displayed a business acumen far in advance of the times end quote see that now what I want to do is I want to go to this part right here on page 44 under the section of treatment and torture of the black slave right uh, listen to this. It says the tortures were, hor were horrifying and including flogging. Flogging means beating. Mutilation, hanging, and quartering. Drowning, starving, drowning, stop, starving to death. Breaking out of the teeth, meaning uh, we saw that in the Birth of a Nation film when they were uh, breaking the slaves' teeth out because the slaves were refusing to eat. Sting, stinging to death by mosquitoes and other insects, as well as burning alive at the stake. 
It says these sadistic tortures were performed seemingly for the sheer pleasure of the Caucasian masters, slitting up their noses and cutting off their ears from private pikery. These are accounted mere sport. When one master died, quote, the principal part of his slaves were beheaded and buried alone with him. There was one report of a Jewish woman who murdered a black woman by running a red hot poker through her. Okay? So, let's put this to the side. It's the Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Volume 1, by Nation Islam. I highly recommend you get it. Now, put that to the side. Let's get into this book. Auction Sales. Family Value of Field Negroes. The book is entitled... Jews selling blacks, slaves, slave sale advertising by Americans, by American Jews, by by the nation of Islam. All throughout this book, because I just got this in the middle of the day, I'm only like on page probably 20. All throughout the book that I've been reading so far, that this is not pertaining, that this is only, that this is only, uh, if this is pertaining only to the Negroes, you know what I'm saying, of being sold. And being uh, brought over here and kidnapped and brought over here against his own will, how do you? How does the British, so-called British Israelites, the Native American Indians, the Hispanics, the uh, the uh, Mexicans, how do they get included into this? I don't. As far as I've been reading so far, I only see Negroes being sold. And put on auction blocks. And it's documented in the Jewish records. Okay? Everybody wants a piece of the pie. Right? Even the nation of Islam supports the fact that we are the children of Israel. You know what I'm saying? They even support the fact that we're the children of Israel. They know the truth as well, too. They, look at the information they're putting out. You know? That's one thing I get in the nation of Islam. I don't see the most... I, don't, I did not see... When they, when they promote their uh, information on the street, I don't see them on the streets cussing white folks out. You know what I'm saying? And things of that nature. They do their stuff in a, in a very fine, conducting manner. You know, and they and they dress very well, too. Versus the Hebrew Israelites, our Hebrew Israelites, brothers. The way they dress, like they done got their stuff out the thrift store, like some hand-me-down stuff. But, you know, that's here nor neither. That's here, uh, neither here nor there. But let's get into this information. I'm going to connect this with a movie that we all know about. Okay? So, let's now check this out. The Jewish Encyclopedia. This is in the Jewish Encyclopedia. It says, quote, The cotton plantations in many parts of the South were wholly in the hands of the Jews. And as a consequence, slavery found its advocates among them. Now, this is in the Jewish Encyclopedia. You know what I'm saying? It's in the Jewish Encyclopedia. Right? So, let's get into this information. Alright, let's read this. This book presents disturbing evidence of the American Jewish participation in the black African slave trade. Jewish merchants from all over the world participated in the humane trade in black human beings, often dominating some of the most important slave trading markets. Jews were particularly active in Brazil and the Caribbean, and much of their activity occurred outside the eventual boundaries of the United States long before it was established as a nation in 1776. Some Jewish scholars 
have used U.S. Census records which show, quote, modest Jewish slaveholding to diminish the role of Jews as major owners of black human beings. This, however, is highly, mis highly misleading. Jews were twice as likely as the general population of American whites to own Africans. Moreover, many Jewish merchants were simultaneously retailing dozens, even hundreds, of Africans through their business enterprise. The 1830 census shows that all the Jews of Charleston, South Carolina, claimed to own a total of 104 black human beings. But a single Jew, Jacob Cohen, on a single day in 1857, offered for sale 125 rice negroes. That same year, the same Mr. Cohen teamed with a Gentile and advertised almost twice that number, 210 negroes in a single day. Jewish slave traders, by economic necessity, tried to, run over, tried to turn over their black human merchandise as quickly as possible. And this brief ownership of Africans by many Jewish merchants is not is not reflected in the census records. Nevertheless, in marketing the products of slave labor and supplying plantations with items of commerce, even buying and selling whole plantations along with the slaves, Jewish merchants helped make slavery profitable in America. Jews were primarily merchants in America, and as a group, Jews had developed a highly advanced and unparalleled business, financial, and mercantile network where slaves were in slaves and the products of slave, slave labor, labor found of slave labor found a ready market and worldwide distribution. Um, cotton, sugar, tobacco, corn, wheat, gold, fur, lumber, as well as all manner of manufacturers such as clothing and textile, furniture, tools, and hardware, etc. were fed into this massive trading network, generating extraordinary, extraordinary wealth which fueled America's astonishing growth. As can be seen in the text of these advertisements, Jewish merchants regarded black human beings as simply another commodity to be funneled into their, into their international trading network. Uh, the reader would note the extraordinary amount of slave trading carried on the South carry on the slave trading carry on by South, South Carolina Jews. In fact, long before the American Jewish population became concentrated in New York, the center of the Jewish community in the slavery era was Charleston. Okay. Uh, it goes on to say here that the city had a had the largest had the largest population of Jews in the country, and was considered the western and was considered the western hemisphere's very center of Jewish wealth and culture. The the origin of Reformed Judaism, the branch of Judaism practiced today by the vast majority of American Jews, began in Charleston in 1825. And when the Jewish reformers in that city announced their new Judaism to the general public, they appeal to all who are influenced by tolerant and unprejudiced feeling. They explained they explain that their actions would extol the force and beauty of the moral law and eschew those practices that partake, that partake strongly in victory, all in honor of of Almighty God. Yet this very same appeal was signed by several Jewish slave owners and printed on the very same page of the city Gassetti, Gassetti and Commercial Daily Advertiser, September 11, 1826, wherein Jewish merchant Abraham Tobias offered for sale and warranted the character of a prime young Negro fellow. Now keep that word prime in mind. We're going to connect this with a film. The language used by Jewish merchants in these advertisements the, uh, 
while the language used by Jewish merchants in these slave advertisements, many of them serving as high synagogue officials and pillars of the Jewish community, betray, betrays their comfort with the hordes of black slavery. It says cargoes of likely Negroes were bought and sold alongside farm animals and furniture. Whole plantations are sold with Negroes, including the purchase shipping services are offered with roomy accommodation for slaves. <coughs> Insurance is offered for slave ships, Negro and mulatto wenches. Keep that word wenches and prime in mind. We're going we're gonna to see that in the film. Are put on the auction blocks as t uh, temperatures. Temptresses. Although all these bargains are uh, bargains publicly offered by Jews in American city newspapers, it goes and say that whole gangs of Negroes, sometimes advertising families, are publicly traded as objects of commerce for pure for pure profit. One merchant has sun-dried Negro slaves and families. Another sells a plantation with a gang of about 60 Negroes with Negro houses to accommodate 50 slaves and another Jewish merchant guarantees the lowest price on real estate, Negro, Negroes, horses, etc. One merchant sells 40 valuable Negroes consisting of house servants and field slaves. Another sells a prime gang of 43. Another merchant sells choice Negroes 80 at one time, and yet another has 65 prime Negroes at a private sale. Listen to this. Children 5 years old, 9 years old, 11, 16, 17, 2 months old, even infants, are all sold without any concern for their welfare or for their families. One advertises a family valuable of field slaves including an, an infant and a two-year-old, both, it says, uh, both of whom the Jewish seller already determined to be field slaves. One seeks to hire 150 young, healthy, able-bodied working Negroes. Evidently, he has left, evidently, he felt it necessary to explain that the Negroes would be treated with humanity. He offered a special deal to sellers. He would not charge for the temporary lodging of, of sucking Negro, of sucking children of Negroes sent to him to sell. Africans are advertised as good, as good housekeepers for elderly whites. And it is chilling to consider the fate of many black girls and boys advertised for sale. One Jewish auctioneer sells rice field Negroes, another sold to long cotton Negroes. One offered 100 prime Virginia slaves, but later had to take out an ad to rebut rumors that he was instead fraudulently selling Kentucky slaves. You see that? Now let's, let's go over here. Let's read this part. Now check this out. Synagogue officials even rabbits, sold black people. Rabbi Jacob Levin sold 22 likely Negroes for investment purposes. He states in his ad, long before the Nazis forced Jews to wear yellow jacket stars, Jewish police were threatening Charleston blacks with corporal punishment. If they did not present their slave badges to any white man who asked, a Jew seeking his runaway Negro informs the public that she had badge number 2090, which proved that she was his property. See that? Other Jewish constables incarcerated blacks they suspected of being runaways and advertised their description in the public newspaper. Another Jew in the role of city assessor reminded his fellow Charleston citizens through a newspaper notice that taxes were due on their slave property. Anyone who might assist his runaway, one Jew threatens, shall be persecuted with the utmost rigor of the law. 
You see that? So long before your so-called Jewish Holocaust happened, and they say that the Germans were, the Nazi were, uh, uh, tattooing their slaves on their hands to show that they that, that they were uh, property or whatever. This took place way before the so-called Jewish Holocaust took place. All right. Now, like I said, so here, so now we have here. These are ads that they have. And as far as what I've been reading so far, the only thing that I'm seeing concerning people being sold on the auction blocks and and their uh, and them being advertising newspapers are Negroes being sold. Okay? Now this is only a hundred this is only a few hundred years ago. Right? Now so you got you have you have ads in here. Ads. And like I said, I'm only on page like what? Twenty I stopped at page twenty five. And I don't see anything in these ads concerning Native American Indians being sold, uh, white Europeans being sold on auction blocks, Mexicans, Hispanics, uh, Native American Indians, uh, French, Germans, Chinese people, uh, Australians, uh, uh, Norwegians, uh, who else? Who else? What other races of people on the face of this earth? Comment down below in my comment box, Israel. Help me out. What I'm seeing here is, is Negroes being sold. Okay? Like I said, now remember I said keep that word wench and prime in mind. We're about to watch a film. And we've all seen it. It's like here it says, by Cohen and Moses, this day, the 14th, instant at 12 o'clock will be sold before our store 20 prime African slaves. Condition, cash on delivery. Okay, now these are ass that they got out, man. Why don't we know about this stuff? The Nation of Islam has done an excellent job putting this information forth. A tremendous job. Okay. Um, you got another one. By Cohen and Moses, November 4th, 1806. This day, the 11th, at 12 o'clock, will be sold before our store. One Negro wench, a good washer and ironer. Also, one African wench with her daughter, a girl of about 14 years of age. And a prime African fellow. See that? By Cohen and Moses, November 18, 1806. This day, the 25th, instant will be sold before our store. A smart, active African boy has been here two years. Has been has been two years in the country. So for no fault but to raise cash, which must be paid on delivery. So he says in uh in, in uh November 18, 1806, that boy was only in the country for only two years. He only had been in the country two years. See that? Now, check this out. Let's put this on pause. Now, check this out. Remember I said keep that word uh, prime and wench in mind. Now, check this out. Check this out. Let me turn this up so you can hear this. Here by the auction block. Ah, there he is. Up to now, I worked my place myself. But I couldn't. He only paid 20 pounds for the wench. And what wench? He said he only paid 20 pounds for the wench. What did you just say? What What did this just say in this in this book? Who would they call the wenches? This is November 14, 1806, by Cohen and Moses. This day, the 11th. 
and 12 o'clock will be sold before our store, one Negro wench. Also, an African wench. Now, now let's keep on going. This is roots. This happened in history. And she was nearly four months showing. And then, if she didn't take the pops and die. Jewish merchants in these slave advertisements, many of them serving as high synagogue officials and pillars of the Jewish community, betrays their comfort with the horrors of black slavery. Cargoes, cargoes of likely Negroes were bought and sold alongside farm animals and furniture. Whole plantations are sold with all Negroes, including in the purchase, shipping services are offered with roomy accommodation for slaves. Insurance is offered for slave ships. Let's keep on going. Largely from the river Gambia. They made a fine passage. In prime healthy condition. Prime healthy condition. Prime healthy condition. What this what, this, what this book just say? What these ads? What they just say? 24 prime Africans, Negroes. I don't, I don't see 24 prime Hispanics. I don't see 24 prime Russians or Germans. I don't see 24 prime or prime uh, Mexicans or British Israelites or Europeans or uh, you name it. Norwegians and, and, and Canadians. Let's keep on going. It's a fine batch up here. So that's another way you know that that 12 tribes chart is false. It's false. Those are all Negroes being sold. All Negroes. You know what I'm saying? Those are all Negroes. So you got people that were sold in the Caribbean. They were dropped off in Mexico. You got Afro-Mexicans. Okay. Let's keep on going. Careful, careful, we don't need more damaged goods. Yeah. All right, first lot, get them out, get them out. The German are waiting. Out. <laughs> come on, wench. What do you call her? Come on, come on, wench. What what they what they call our, what they call our ancestors? Wenches. This is this is documented, man. Look. One H. S. Cohen, November 9th, 1837, wanted immediately a Negro woman. Or a house servant for which wages will be paid immediately. Uh, let's go back here to one nigga wench. What did he just call in that movie? Come on, you wench. They call it call them wenches. Wenches, gentlemen, first to whet your appetites as it were. Those desiring to inspect the items being offered for defects and blemishes, please step forward at your pleasure. That's cool to can't tell his sister is being so he recognizes her. Let's go a little bit further. Now then so her. Time to proceed, gentlemen. Time to stop the looking. Start and the back in there, looking through her hair, examining her teeth, all that stuff. Well, let's keep on going. All right. Hmm. Good lines to that one. Look at his eyes. He's not even close to being broken. He said he said he's not even close to being broken. What do you mean by that? I mean, he's not, he haven't broken him in yet. They haven't, they haven't changed it. They haven't gotten to the point uh, of him resisting, of 
of him. Uh, they, they, uh, also, they haven't changed his name yet. <laughs> Here's a likely looking hand, a prime young buck. Prime young buck, prime. What they call? What they call us? Prime, prime. By Cohen and Moses, November 19, 1807. This day, precisely at 12 o'clock, we sold before our store three prime Africans. See that? Um. What is this? It's February 10th. Uh, let's see here. This is February 11th, 1790. Public auction on Monday, the 15th. Instant will be sold before my store. A likely Negro wench. As good as good a cook. Uh, what is that? Waiter and honor. As any in this, what is that? State. Okay, see this. So some of this stuff is a little bit, a little bit old English. All right, some of this stuff is a little bit old English. But let's keep on going. Spit from the trees, bright as a monkey, good bones, sinew. Say, bright as a monkey. What they call us? Monkeys and coons, baboons and apes. Water free and defect. Good teeth, good for Carolina rice, Virginia tobacco, Maryland corn. Pull like an ox and carry like a mule. Step up, see for yourself. You see that white man? See, see that? That's a Jewish man. They, these are these are Jewish people that are selling us and brought us over on slave ships. They were the main sellers and main buyers. Gentlemen, he's free of thieves, files, fresh box. Young, biddable, fine animal, gentlemen. All right, so let's 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 let's, let's go to another one. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the so now they sold them off. Now they sold them off, and now we're gonna get to the part with the uh with the plantations when they break them in. We're gonna have them have them change his name. So he done, so he done ran away, right? They caught him. And now they now they whipping him. James. Your name is Toby. I want to hear you say it. Your name is Toby. You're going to learn to say your name. Let me hear you say it. What's your name? Kunta, Kunta Kinte. Now, when uh, now when I heard uh, Mr. Farrakhan tell that story uh, about what happened to that that uh, uh, slave, black slave, back in nineteen sixties, I'm like, man, I thought slavery ended. How she, how she, how was she still being a slave in the nineteen sixties? See, a certain thing that's still going on in certain areas in the country. So, especially deep down in the South, you know what I'm saying, it's still, some of those people are still, are, are still, psycholog still psychologically damaged. Some of those people are still, some of those, it's not talked about, man. It's not talked about. It's hidden. Some of those people are still, and some of those people are still slaves. You think slavery is ended? If they if they write the laws and pass the laws, they can put the laws back into effect anytime they want to. At the drop of a hat. You know what I'm saying? So we just seen from Roots and just using this book here alone that that movie Roots actually uh what happened in Roots actually took place in history. Like I said, I'm still I'm still reading this. I'm still reading this. In part two of this book, the secret relationship between blacks and Jews should be in the mail by probably Thursday. I got I got to start reading. I'm gonna have to start reading that. But I'm showing I'm showing you time after time again, man. Time after 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 time after
time to time again. That they know who we are. They know who we are. Like here. Public auction on Monday, the 11th, will be sold at the house of Mr. James Jacks, number uh, 112, 112 Broad Street, one Negro winch, a good cook, and two Negro girls. Conditions. Notes at 60 and 120 days credit. With good endorsers, the property not to be altered until the conditions are, com are compiled with. Um, you got here, you got here, let's read this part, I'm, I'm going to end my lesson, I'm going to end my lesson, Jacob and Cohen and Son, estate sale, 210 Rice Field Negroes by P.J. Porcher and Bayer, P.J. Porcher Auctioner, this is in this is January 5th to January 6th, 1857. Uh, it says that on Thursday, the, the 8th day of January 8th, 1856, at 11 o'clock a.m., will be sold at the Old State, what is that? Uh, I can't see what that says. Bank? Let me see. I get my magnifying glass out. That comes in hand. All right. That comes in hand. Okay. Let me turn my light on. Let's get into this. Let's see what this says. Okay. It says here that uh, it will be sold at. I can't see what that says. Old State Bank or Block or something like that. Whatever it says. Now accompanied. Now accompanied. Uh, what I leave off at? Okay, uh, let's do this. Now accompanied by Jacob Cohen and Son in the city of Charleston. 210 Negroes and families accustomed to the culture of rice, cotton, and provisions on Cooper. Okay? <coughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Among which are valuable carpenters, millwrights, engineers, coopers, mill, blacksmiths, boat hands, and house servants. See that? So I'm, I'm all throughout this book. I'm, 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 I'm reading nothing but Negroes that's being sold. Negroes. Why am I not saying, reading anything about Native American Indians? Or put on auction blocks or or um, Hispanics or Mexicans or Chinese people or Caucasians or so-called British Israelites. Why? How come I don't see? Your 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 race being put in newspapers, tracked down like some like like fugitives. You know what I'm saying? Why, how come I'm not reading none of this stuff? Look at this. I'm jumping a gun here. It's on page 48. So I'm giving you snippets of this book for free. What's up to you to go out and purchase the information? R Ralph Isaacs. This is back in October. 30th, 1792, 1772. It's a, it's a poster put up, an ad. It says, wanted a number of Negroes, men, women, and children from 8 to 30 years of age. From 8 years old to 30 years of age. Any, what is that? Any person having such a dipple of May Dipple of may find a purchaser by applying to Ralph Isaacs. See, some of this stuff is in old English. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to make it out as best as I can. You know what I'm saying? Like here. Jacob, Jacob, South, South, what is that? South of the Exchange, 
This is uh, Charleston City Gasati and Daily Advertiser, April 11, 1788. Private sale, a likely invaluable young Negro wench. Used to, let's see, they got an H O U F E, but that's housework. Used, so they're saying she's used to housework, has been in this state about four or five years. Warranted by vendor, what is that? By the uh, by the vendor, I believe that says master, to be found and healthy and sold for no other reason than, but uh, what is that? And sold for no other reason than the than that she cannot agree with the. Uh, I'm trying to make this out. This is old English. It says left or ref of the Negroes in the family. Conditions, conditions, ready money. See that? So all throughout this book, all throughout this book is nothing but Negroes is being sold. Negroes. Negroes. How come I'm not seeing any other race of people that's being sold or put on auction blocks? Okay? So, you know what I'm saying? It's up to you to, to, to get the information and read it for yourself and 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 present it to these white folks, man. Like, hey, man, what's 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 going on? Why aren't y'all talking about these things? How come it's being hidden? What's up, you you white Ashkenaz and Sephardic Jewish people? And who, who else, else claims to be Jewish? Why aren't you telling your babies, about your children about this stuff? Why has it been hidden? It's in your Jewish encyclopedia books. And you're claiming to be someone who you're not. You're identity thefts. You're claiming to be uh, descendants of the children of Israel that's in the, that's in the Bible. But you're not. It's not you. I can say with definitive proof, with all the research that I've been doing, you know what I'm saying, and the library of information I have in my home, and the people that I've talked to, I can say with, with definitive proof and authority that I am a children, I'm a child of the Most High. I'm a, I'm a descendant of the children of Israel. So, let's read the back this one more time. I'm going to end my lesson. This is the Jewish. Let me let me put this up where you can see us. Get my flashlight. Jewish Encyclopedia. Quote: The cotton plantations in many parts of the South were wholly in the hands of the Jews, and as a consequence, slavery found its advocates among them. See that? So with that being said, click subscribe. I'm showing you the information to, to get. So you don't have to be deceived anymore. You can know who are the major players, the key players that's, that's in this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And you can show with definitive proof on what's going on. This book is entitled, Jews Selling Blacks, Slave Sale Advertising by American Jews. And it, this is put out by the Nation of Islam. Auction sales, valuable family of field Negroes, and this is the first book they had out. They got out the secret relationship between blacks and Jews. You know what I'm saying? And then the other one that's coming in the mail is part two. Um, part two. be in the mail by no later than Thursday or Friday. So, I got some, some uh, studying to do. You know what I'm saying? But I will be back put up lessons and uh, do, do time process. So, bear with me. Thank all my supporters, my subscribers. You know what I'm saying? This information 
when I present a spirit charge, I'm not charging you for anything, you know. Uh, thanks for giving me the encouraging words to keep on pushing this truth, and you can do the same thing I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? If you're not far up in your studies, you know, if you're not comfortable with making lessons, you know, just comment down below, you know. And if you, uh, when you build up that courage, you know, you can start making lessons, uh, and, you know, with small, uh, doing small, like small increments, like small portions, you know what I'm saying? You can make your lesson like probably like a five minutes long, you know what I'm saying? When you get to that confidential stage, you know, start making, start advancing. Make it 20 minutes long, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, you know? But the information must be put out. We must put this truth out there. And you see the Nation of Islam is doing a, a hell of a job, a tremendous job. Putting this information out there, and I'm support. I'm supporting. Them. I'm back. I'm backing them. I'm I'm behind them 100. percent 100. percent They are. They are even. They are even admitting that we are the children of Israel. Watch Mr. Farrakhan's lessons. Watch his lessons. They don't deny Jesus, the, Mas the Messiah. They don't deny him. The Scripture says, whoever denies. The Mashiach is Antichrist. Well, who denies, who denies Jesus? The Jews. The Jews deny Jesus, the Mashiach. The Arab Muslims, I've talked to them before, they don't deny Jesus, they call him a prophet. Okay? get back to reading my my book. You know what I'm saying? I gotta finish reading this up. I'm giving you the information to, to read about. This book is entitled Jews Selling Blacks, Slaves Selling, Slave, Slave Sale Advertising by American Jews. And I first I, I recommend you start off with the first one, with the first book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews. I'm about to reread this. I'm gonna reread this all over again. You know, when you read something once you might skip over something. And when you read it a second or third time, you say, oh, I didn't, I didn't know I, I read over that. You know what I'm saying? So I told you must be thorough, precise in our information, our studies. So whenever we come upon someone, upon another, uh, we come upon another race and they question us about these things, we can, we can give it to them at the, at the dime of a hat. You know what I'm saying? Like, this X, Y, and Z, you all did this, that, and the third, this day and time. You know what I'm saying? We got the facts and proof and evidence. You know what I'm saying? You don't like it? You don't like it? Deal with it. Sit down and shut up. Get out of my face. Once again, let's read the back of this one more time. It's on the Jewish encyclopedia. They're admitting this stuff. Quote, the cotton plantations and many parts of the South were wholly in the hands of the Jews. And as a consequence, slavery found its advocates among them. Who were, the, who were, who were driving the slave boats? Who was, who was, who was the captain of the slave ships? The Jews. Who was the crew members? The Jews. Who, who had the, the money to finance the uh, the slave shackles? The Jews. And even Farrakhan admits that some Muslims, you had Arabs that was involved, you had uh, indigenous Africans who were involved. But the main ones were these Jewish people. So with that being said, I say peace and shalom. Keep on doing your studies, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.